Councillor uh, uh, Dobbins, will you want to? Councillor Dobbins, you want to bless this meeting? Father, thank you for the privilege of being here. May we ever be mindful that we are accountable. We're accountable to our people, to one another, but most importantly, account uh, accountable to you, Father. So we ask that everything we say and do be pleasing in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Amen. Shelly, you do the roll call? Yes, sir. Joe Bird. Honey. Brian Warner. Honey. Bill Anglin. Keith Austin. Here. Brother Bezard. Yes. Tom Crittenden. Mike Dobbins. Here. Frankie Vargas. <coughs> Wanda Hatfield. Rex Jordan. Here. Nick Lay. Um, Mike Shambaugh. Here. Mary Bakershaw. Present. Theo Smith. Here. Denise Taylor. Here. Victoria Vesquez. Here. David Walkenstick. We might have wore everybody out during the budget process, but uh, we'll do the best we can here. This time, uh, I'd entertain approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. A motion and second. Any questions? All in favor, seek five and say an aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. We'll drop down to reports. Uh, I don't know if anyone will be here from the marshal service. I know they've been called out. And they've been very, very busy. So uh, is there anybody here from marshal service? No, we'll drop down to the uh, Office Attorney General, Mr. Todd Hembrick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, uh, I wanted to extend our uh, prayers and, and uh, <coughs> good thoughts to uh, the Marshal Service and the uh, team uh, of Marshals that traveled down to uh, Texas to uh, uh, render uh, much appreciated, much needed aid. Uh, to those areas that, uh, uh, as we all know, uh, uh, an evident, uh, Cherokee uh, community in the in the Houston area, and and we were glad to uh, render whatever assistance that uh, they are capable of doing, which is submit, which is a significant amount. So um, we all should be thankful for that. Uh, major happenings in the Attorney General's uh, office. Uh, First, uh, the progression uh, in uh, education has taken has continued to take place on the, the, the Murray uh, this Murphy decision. Excuse me. Uh, as you recall, that was a decision from the Tenth Circuit case, a criminal case that uh, involved uh, uh, a major crimes act that was uh, violation of murder that was uh, occurred. Uh, State of Oklahoma prosecuted him. The Tenth Circuit reversed uh, uh, and remanded that case, saying that uh, the jurisdiction would be uh, federal and tribal. But the major uh, point that is important to us is that the uh, Murray uh, decision held that the Creek Nation uh, reservation has never been disestablished by Act of Congress. Which, uh, uh, if that becomes the law of the land, will have uh, very significant ramifications uh, on uh, uh, criminal jurisdiction, civil jurisdiction, regulatory uh, jurisdiction. Uh, so uh, it does apply right now just to the Creek criminal matter, but the same treaties, same. Uh, uh, legislative acts uh, apply to the Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaws, and Seminoles. It, it, it directly affects the, the five tribes. Uh, there has been talk of it uh, affecting other tribes. I will, will tell you that, uh, in, in my legal opinion, uh, it would not. That it is purely a five tribes uh, issue. But in that regard, we are uh, actively. Uh, Seeking out, speaking with uh, state officials, um, maybe had conversations with the secretary at the end. We had a meeting with uh, uh, General Hunter uh, coming up. We have talked with our legislative uh, delegation and we continue to do so. Uh, this case is a long ways before it became the law of the land. Uh, the, uh, uh, this was decided by a three judge panel. Uh, 
what will happen next if the state of Oklahoma will ask for a, a hearing on bonk, which means the entire circuit, that's nine justices, uh, and uh, the state of Oklahoma's uh, uh, deadline for requesting a hearing on bonk is September 21st. Uh, uh, after uh, a hearing on bonk, uh, uh, I would foresee either party appealing it to the United States Supreme Court where uh, are asking for social right to to uh, to appeal that or, or to, to uh, hear it if the Supreme Court decides to grant cert uh, we will uh, I will tell you the Cherokee Nation will be active active in that case we will be active at the 10th Circuit on Monk uh, area and we will uh, be uh, coordinating with other members of the five tribes to make sure that uh, we have a consistent and coherent uh, legal messaging uh, to all the, the stakeholders. Uh, I will keep the, the council advised of the development in, in the Murray case. Uh, it is one of, potentially one of the most significant Indian law cases uh, in several generations. So uh, that is something that I will keep the, the, the council aware of. Uh, speaking of generational cases, yesterday, approximately 3.30, some 22 hours ago, the uh, uh, District Court of the District of Columbia, Judge Hogan, issued a 78-page ruling on the, the Friedman issue. The way that that was, uh, came to fruition is that this is a case that has uh, I believe just in its present tense is a four, 13 or 14 year old case. Uh, we have uh, uh, the issue itself uh, has been uh, uh, an issue of uh, great consternation and concern to the Cherokee Nation since 1866. What we had determined early on is to consolidate all the, the parties into to, to one court and to uh, set other issues to the side and get to the core matter, which is what, if anything, did the Treaty of 1866 grant the Freedmen and its descendants. Uh, we, tried, we, 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 we had that hearing uh, in um, 2000, May of 2014 in, in D.C. and literally as the judge was getting off the bench said, I got an order prepared. I will, you'll be hearing from me shortly. Uh, that was three years ago. Uh, and, but we did hear yesterday. Uh, and uh, we are working on a synopsis to, uh, of the case. Uh, it is, uh, I said, a 78 page uh, decision goes through a, a lot of uh, history, a lot of treaty interpretation, a lot of statutory uh, uh, legislative history and interpretation um, that um, uh, takes time to go through, uh, but we are working on a briefing paper uh, for government officials and the Tribal Council. Uh, the, uh, the synopsis of the decision is that the uh, uh, Judge Hogan ruled that uh, Friedman had the same rights as Native Cherokees and that Native Cherokees could be citizens of the Cherokee Nation, and then they could be citizens of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, so we are uh, digesting that opinion, uh, looking at all legal options. Uh, I know the, the press is always in a rush to, uh, uh, to get the, the story out. Mm -hmm. That's not what we do here. Uh, our evaluation must be thorough must be complete before we start down a legal path uh, and we will know that when we make those decisions this office makes those decisions that it's going to be the best interest of the Cherokee, Cherokee people um, again uh, there, there's uh, copious things that the uh, Attorney General's office uh, uh, does on a daily basis and would w welcome each and every one of you to come up and visit with us and uh, to, to get a better understanding uh, of, uh, of what we do in, in all the areas that we cover. But those are the two major ones, and I would uh, 
uh, entertain any questions that the uh, council may have. Maybe we can do this like we did the preparation for our budget hearing is uh, small groups without establishing a quorum and uh, when you get ready to strategize and how you're going to move forward with this and you know, keep us informed on, on how you're going to certainly handle will this. obviously uh, some of the information that I'll chair would be privileged and confidential sure. and we would make uh, sure that uh, uh, appropriate measures were taken but uh, uh, as we stand here 22 hours after the decision uh, we are formulating or uh, the Attorney General's office is formulating its legal course of action okay. yes you have a question uh, yes, I was just wondering, is it possible that in the future that you could just drop us all a line so that we at least we're aware of something of this magnitude has happened and that, you know, that you, there, that your office will have no, you know, we will not make any statements at this time or something to, so we don't have to read it on Facebook from somebody who works in a registration or something. I actually had two phone calls yesterday and, and one of them actually said, you know, uh, the at-large represents the greatest amount of, uh, of our freedmen, and we would think you would be aware of this situation. I didn't even know it existed Well, uh, at I, that point. I, I appreciate that, uh, that concern, um, but I, I, I will also say that um, you know, my first you know, goal within the first <coughs> six hours was going through very meticulously every page of, uh, of this opinion. Uh, the, uh, we have a press department, the council has, 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 a, has a press officer. Um, I'm always in, in favor of open lines of communication, but I will, uh, I will just be frank, that wasn't my first concern. My first concern is to get this thing digested and get a legal course of action. And I can appreciate that. It's just that if somebody somewhere could just drop us a little line, FYI, you know, yeah. this happened today. Right now we have no statement. We're in the process of studying, uh, studying it. And interpreting and, yeah, it would be like, appreciated i will pass that along to our, our uh, uh, communications department thank you okay anybody else council walks it the uh i've been getting a lot of phone calls as well todd and i was caught off guard caught second hand with you know reading newspaper articles and uh i think i would be appreciative if you, if you was more diligent on giving us a heads up of something that might catch a lot of attention and and, and I know you're busy trying to fight these fights, but maybe someone in your department say, hey, this is, this is going to be a wreck here. We need, we need your... As soon as the, the decision came down, I, I notified uh, governmental officials. Uh, Mr. Walsh said, I'll, I'll, I'll... Lack of communication. Well, well, well you yeah. know, the deal is we're not the communication department. And, exactly. and, and, and yeah. uh, our job is to continue to digest the, the, this matter. Uh, and uh, so I, like I said, I'll pass it along, but uh, you know, uh, I can't make any, the only commitments I can make of my department is that we will study each issue very thoroughly and we will make the best decision, in our opinion, as to the course of legal action in the chair yeah. Well, you know, our speaker, he's, he's our spokesman for all of us, and you know, if you guys just contact him, he can get, get the information down to all of us. I understand. You know, so. But uh, yeah, I think I think it's premature to say anything about this Friedman issue because there's a long road ahead of us. Uh, I, I do <coughs> hope that uh, you guys uphold our sovereignty as a tribe, and uh, you know, and, and just be careful because in the end, where the outcome is, we don't have any any say. It's going to be up to the Supreme Court ultimately on this whole thing and, um, and we're just going to have to eat it for what it is but in, in the meantime we all took a, a oath to uphold our constitution and so I uh, so I, I appreciate the fight from your end for that well and like I said there, there are uh, uh, enormous amounts of uh, uh, legal considerations legal uh, intertwined, uh, legally intertwined issues. Uh, uh, what is the best path for the Cherokee Nation? Uh, and uh, as you know, I took the same oath you, you took. You know, I, I do uh, uh, plan on uh, defending the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation and the Constitution of the United States as part of the oath yeah. also. 
Uh, <clears throat> but uh, you know, the, uh, in, in accordance with that the Cherokee Nation Constitution, that gives you know the, the sole legal uh, discretion on legal matters of which Cherokee Nation is a party to the Attorney General's office. And that's why we're very tight-lipped of what we're contemplating because we, you know, our, our job isn't PR communication or, sure. or uh, whatever uh, you call it. Our job is to make the best legal position uh, decisions for the Cherokee people. <coughs> that's what I tend to do. Sure. Uh, thank you, Tate. Thank you. Speaking about the yes, yes Councilor Buzzer. And, and just like. Uh, the Attorney General to make the best decision for the Cherokee people. And in turn, we represent the Cherokee people. We're elected body here. I'm a little deterred about what the protocol is. Uh, I figure that how do you, do you get notified? Do we not have a protocol within the Cherokee Nation that the council gets notification? This, this is kind of ridiculous that, that we have to reach stuff on Facebook. And we've gone over this before about things that happen at our properties and here we sit here don't know anything about it and we got a constituent call us and I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's it's uh, it's been aggravating and it's not just now. It's been that way for several years, so I wish we'd get a protocol worked out to the chair to, to get it worked out. Anybody else? Hmm. Yes. Council. So when they call us are we tell we're not giving out cards, not letting them sign up. The, what we will, what we are doing at this point, uh, is uh, if a freedman citizen, uh, freedman uh, Cherokee freedman comes in for citizenship papers to, to make an application, the registration department will take that application and begin processing it. Okay. Uh, now, depending on the the final resolution, whether the card is issued or not, uh, ultimately issued or not, has re yet to. Remains to be seen, but right now, if a, uh, a person of uh, freedman descent comes in to apply, we will take <coughs> that application and we will again process it. Is that good? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? I got to just say that yes. uh, appreciate you. I know that these uh, legal matters take time, and it's, it is difficult to uh, have a quick answer for anything, especially. In that respect, is you know you don't want to talk at a turn, and everything has to be, um, you know, has to be looked at, and, and it has to be presented in the proper way. Especially if you're gonna, you know, if you represent us, and and uh, like I said, I know that this process is a long, difficult, and I just want to say appreciate uh, all that you guys do, and I know it's a difficult thing to do quickly. It takes time. I know that. Uh, thank you, Councilor Shambaugh. Uh, the uh, we live in, a, in an information age where it's instantaneous. Okay. Uh, the, the, literally, the, 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 the email I received was at 3.31 yesterday. All right? By 4.05 or thereabouts, it made social media. Right? Uh, and we started receiving our first press calls about 4 o'clock. Uh, Decisions uh, can be made quickly in, in in the communication and should be made uh, quickly in the communications and in, 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 uh, public relations field. Quick decisions do not be made in my office. They have to be thorough. Like I said we're not going to rush to judgment. Anything. This is an issue uh, that has, is over 170 years old. This present court case is thir at least 13 years old. We don't need to set a course of action in the first 22 hours of getting this decision. We will be methodical, we will be uh, thorough, and we will come up with the best uh, course of action that is in the best interest of Cherokee people. Okay. Well, I first was notified about 6.30 yesterday, and I called the chief, and he said he'd have the attorney general give us a briefing today. Of course, I'm not going to give a legal opinion. I'm just going to be cautious, and I, I'm almost through reading it. I'm probably halfway through. Well, and in that regard, uh, if everyone doesn't have my cell phone number, I will give it to you, uh, and uh, feel absolutely free to call me at any time, Darren. I'm not going to put that cell phone number out here 
with uh, stream video. <laughs> but <laughs> happy to give it to you individually to make sure that you have it programmed into your phone uh, so that uh, you can you can reach me. I, I take calls as early as 5 a.m. and as, as late as midnight. So there's, there's not an inappropriate time for you to call me. Just keep us updated. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Gwen Terrapin. FOIA. ERA. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to say welcome and congratulations to our re-elected and newly elected council members. Um, for so far, we've got. 10 FOIA requests and two GRA requests and everything's been answered we don't have anything outstanding and our website's been updated and everyone should have received a copy of my report from the other day um, and I greatly appreciate all of your support your continued support for our department and for everything that we're doing and I encourage our new council members to go on there if you have any questions about anything and and look at what's been asked before. If you have any questions, um, all you have to do is contact me and I'll be glad to, to help you with anything. Okay, we appreciate what you do, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Tax Commission, Sharon Swepson. You always count on Sharon. <laughs> Afternoon. Afternoon. I believe you have my report. I'll try to address any questions. I only have one thing that I would like to add uh, to the speaker's question on during budget hearings about the uh, expanded jurisdiction. I didn't give you any numbers because I don't like to just quote them off the top of my head. But uh, we have we went into uh, issuing tags in FY14, 1.5 million in revenue for the expanded jurisdictional area. FY15 was 2.5, FY16, 2.9. FY17 through July, it's 2.9 for a total of about $10 million in revenue for that expanded jurisdictional area. So just, and I will, this is a one page report. I, and I'll, I will start sending it to you monthly. If you would like to have that, it will give you the revenue and the number of tags that have been issued. It includes the renewals. Other than that, if you have any questions about my report, I'll try to answer them. <coughs> Thanks for that information because I know that will be really beneficial to Councillor mm -hmm. Shaw and then Councillor Hatfield on that. Uh, appreciate your update. Thank You're you. Welcome. Any questions from Sharon? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have Miss Self Governance. Is she here today? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. My report. Seems like I finished this <laughs> last week. Yeah. I think you have my report. If you've got any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Any questions for self governance? You must be doing a good job there. Thank you. Appreciate you. And I want to thank you for <clears throat> laying the groundwork for some of the benefits I know are forthcoming for making contact with USDA. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Gaming Commission, Jamie Hummingbird. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jim. I see at least two council members got the blue shirt memo today. <laughs> I believe uh, my reports made it in on time again this month. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Awesome. Good job. Uh, I have no other information to add, but I'll take any questions that you might have. Any questions for Jamie? You did a good job during budget hearings. Uh, I, I'm, I'm speechless. Okay. <laughs> and that's why yes, Councilor Hatfield. <laughs> do, uh, do, do we, um, uh, when we have questions about the Arkansas initiative, whatever you want to call it, do we direct them to you, or who do we, or who, who are, you know? Just, I, just I, would, uh, I would probably direct those over towards uh, Sean Slayton or Mark okay. Fulton. Okay. Uh, since that was in, out of our jurisdiction, we had nothing okay. to do with that. Uh, we, of course, kept an eye on it. We were always interested in what's going on in the gaming world, but as far as any responsibility, that was solely within CNE. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? 
Yes, Councillor Buzz. Just, just a question, Jane. When, when they, the electricity went out in Hard Rock last week, uh -huh. did you have to go back in and verify or set up the machines again? Well, the yes, uh, in, in fact, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I was actually thinking about that. I was going to add that, and I got up here and I blanked out. Um, no, last Saturday evening, uh, last Saturday afternoon, the Hard Rock experienced uh, some power issues, and they started uh, operating off of generator power around 3 or 4 in the afternoon. Uh, they had some complications internally. They didn't know exactly what was going on with that. Uh, the entire uh, data center that operates the uh, servers and everything for the games went down and the decision was made to uh, remove uh, patrons from the gaming floor uh, because surveillance went down, everything went down. And so once that happened, uh, it was not until around 2 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning that power was restored. And once that power came back on, uh, there there are protocols uh, to uh, reboot the servers, restart the services from, from all of the different um, game servers as well as the peripherals for uh, all the gaming related uh, systems such as your back of house accounting system <coughs> and uh, food and beverage, hotel, so on and so forth. Uh, so once the uh, power came back on, an assessment was made of the floor and the machines and their, their level of operation to see if there was any malfunctions or anything wrong with the machines there. Uh, there is a testing protocol that we have provided as a set of guidelines to operations uh, for them to go through and examine the facilities. And we have tools uh, at our disposal uh, that allow us to do a lot of that on the back end. So if we are able to uh, test our communications between the machines and the servers and see that there's good communication going back and forth. That is basically the litmus test that we use to determine whether or not the floor has been affected negatively. Uh, there were a few uh, machines here and there that were affected, uh, but as with electronics, you can expect uh, things not to be you know, uh, you know, all in one area. You, they'll be hit and miss. Uh, but there, there were successful uh, tests being done. Surveillance was uh, reviewed. The servers there were, were uh, taken into account, and everything was uh, passed there. So it, it took about um, five or six hours to get all of those different tests done of all the different systems, the surveillance, the games, everything else. Uh, but the uh, facility was returned back into service earlier that morning, on Sunday morning. So uh, we do have... Um, in addition to that, uh, we do have uh, disaster recovery protocols in place for all information that is processed by the casino. So we're talking all of your financial transactions, we're talking about all the gaming transactions, everything that goes on in there, we have backups for that. And so uh, at the end of all of this, uh, the uh, uh, source of the problem was determined to be the flywheel, which is a uh, a preventative measure that uh, was put in place to help stave off uh, downtime from any power surges or power outages. The flywheel is intended to kind of provide some <coughs> emergency kick start energy uh, to keep everything going uh, in order for the generator to kick in. And what was happening was there was a, uh, a problem with the flywheel. It was malfunctioning itself, so it was interrupting power, and then once power was lost, it was not allowing the generator to kick on. The generator was going, but it wasn't producing electricity that it would allow through. Uh, they disabled the flywheel and connected it straight to power, uh, which enabled everything to get back up. And this morning, uh, they were attempting to uh, fix that flywheel. They ran into some problems. Uh, they're going to try again tomorrow morning. Uh, we have people there uh, from the, the Gaming Commission. We have the people from the risk, uh, excuse me, the safety uh, departments with the operations as well as facilities and everybody else there to make sure that that particular uh, aspect of our electrical system is working just the way it's supposed to. We don't want to see any repeats of this, particularly with the heavy weekend coming up. I see, and I think the flywheel was the problem five years ago. Yeah. Uh, and at, at that time, I think the flywheel was probably um, 
showing signs of wear yeah. and uh, was fixed then, uh, but that was five years ago. And we've had numerous uh, occasions on which we had to rely on the flywheel since then. So I'm, I'm just thinking this is just a matter of, of, of basic wear. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good. Yes. Councilor Shaw. Uh, yes, Jamie, can you tell me the casino totally blacked out, is that correct? Yes, uh, when <coughs> the when I say blacked out, I'm not talking, you, we lost lights up here that you can see by, we, when we lose the data center, we lose all of the ability to uh, conduct the games and then also the data center is where the servers for the surveillance system are located as well. The reason I'm asking is that it's been years ago, but uh, I was actually in Las Vegas at a casino where the lights blinked off for a certain, and they actually changed out all the chips. Uh, you had to cash them in, and new chips were replaced. Mm -hmm. And something about, I, I forgot how many hours or days you had to cash in any chips, and that's how they, I, I mean, it was a security caution. Do we have a, a, a precaution like that in, in place? Um, not necessarily for uh, just complete blackouts. Uh, we do have secondary sets of chips in place for all of our card and table games. Uh, it is an option, I will say, uh, to change those out should there be a concern about lost chips or uh, any compromise of the integrity of either the cards or the tables. Uh, so far we have not had to have that discussion with operations about what to do in that event. But we do have backup plans just in case there is a concern that any of the instruments that we use have been compromised. I'm not sure if that answers the question. Or yeah, not. I, I'm just not sure that, uh, in other words, this was a, a feature to where they had full accountability on the money on the table right. and, and how much there was. And you're, you're basically saying they blinked off and when they did come on, I mean, you all didn't change out the chips, so there was actually no formal accounting of how many were in play at that moment? Not at that moment. What, what happens when, when those situations occur, um, when there is the slightest hint that uh, surveillance has been lost, uh, that's, when, that, that's the reason why the, the uh, casino floor is evacuated. It's not because of there, anybody's in danger or anything. There's still life safety lights. In, in, in this case, the actual uh, daylights did not go out. But the, the reason the floor is evacuated is just because we have concerns about the protective integrity card and table games, as well as what could happen with those machines and the servers. Uh, there's a, 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 sh a shutdown protocol that we have to follow in order to safely uh, maintain the integrity of all of that data. So whenever we do an evacuation, they do a, um, a rough count countdown of the, the chips and uh, everything that's on the tables then, and they lock them up just like they would as if they were closing it for the night. Uh, but it is, it, it's done at that time, and then once the services are restored, they're just simply reopened. That paperwork is dropped along with the other paperwork uh, through the normal course of business. So, I mean, there, there is some accounting, but they, they don't take it and necessarily um, make it like it's the end of day accounting. They do a tally, make sure that they have an idea of what is still in there, so that when they open back up, they still have a, a good starting point uh, for audit to come back in if there's any questions. Good? Are you good? That's quite a little deal. Anybody else? Good report. Thank you very much. Human Resources, uh, Nason Morton. <coughs> Good afternoon. The closer we get to September and October, um, gets to our busy part of the year as we close out the fiscal year, and each employee will have at least one um, interaction or electronic um, change in status or just something, that piece of paper or electronic process that we take care of. Minimum, that's 3500 could be up to three times that amount. So it will be interesting and fun for the next couple <laughs> weeks, or maybe the next six weeks. Um, We'll also close out, periodically I give you guys a um, kind of an update on how long it takes to fill a position. And I will probably have a final report on that ready 
I'm going to say <laughs> November, December, because we checked them to make sure we'll close out the year um, September, last day of September, and then we'll just try to give you a list of all requisitions for onboarding that were opened and closed during the fiscal year. And so basically, um, some of you have seen them before, it just lists out kind of the day the requisition got to us all the way to the point where we have a person sitting in the chair at orientation. And then we kind of divide them out in subcategories. It's nice because that way we can do quality assurance and see if we're having um, any challenges in any one area and we can just make adjustments and that way it kind of gives us an idea of where we have an issue. So that will be coming. Other than that, um, my written report, if anyone has any questions, I'll see if I can answer them or find out the answer. Anybody? Yes, just give me an update on how we're handling those teachers there for those yes. quick hires. I have that on my list. Okay. I'll All have right. an update um, next month. Thank you. Good report. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. No business. I want to ask the, the council to, uh, <coughs> for personnel issue to go into executive session. Make a motion. motion. Second. Got a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I would uh, uh, ask that everybody leave the premises here. Uh, AG, you might stand close by. We may need you. We may not. I'll be in the hallway for Okay. Would you uh, please uh, have the, uh, the uh, Talina to come in? Hello. We need about five minutes. Yeah, I told him to give me the okay. He's got to stop the stream and put in the new tape. All right. Are we having fun yet? We're having a blast. <laughs> Fish one, two.